Hi everyone, welcome to Mostly Math. Today we'll be doing another video about general relativity. We'll just be doing an ordinary coordinate transformation today. We will be talking about the Payne Lave Goal Strand coordinates. And these are interesting because they show that the Schwarzschild metric. is going to be singular at r equals zero, which we know it should be, but it actually shows that it is regular or non-singular at r equals rs. This is a common fact that is often cited in textbooks about general relativity. They don't always show the explicit coordinate transformation that proves it to you. That's what I wanna do today. And we will start by writing down the Schwarzschild metric, perhaps in a different form than you're, than you're used to seeing it. Schwarzschild metric is ds squared is equal to minus one minus v squared. I'll define v in a moment. dt squared plus dr squared over one minus v squared plus r squared d omega squared. We are defining v squared to be the Schwarzschild radius divided by r, and of course the d omega squared we're not going to be using in this video. It's just d theta squared plus sine squared theta d phi squared, the angular part. Basically the metric is um, spherically symmetric and we're only going to be talking about the, the relationship between the time and the radial coordinates here, so we're not going to need this for the rest of the video. And this is just the ordinary Schwarzschild metric before we change coordinates. So we get the singular behavior as always from the dr squared coefficient. 1 minus 1 over v squared is simply 1 over 1 minus the Schwarzschild radius over r, of course, which we notice goes to infinity both at r equals zero, since if we type zero in here, we get infinity and so forth. You just, you just don't want to plug that into an expression. You don't want to have any one over zeros because it could be plus or minus infinity. It's just not defined. And it also goes to infinity at r equals rs because it becomes one minus one in the denominator, which is also going to be one over zero again. You just don't want that. So we aim to find a coordinate transformation that will explicitly show us that it should be singular at r equals zero. So this bad boy shouldn't be allowed, but we should be able to substitute r equals rs in and it should be okay. So let's go ahead and write down the coordinate transformation that we're going to use and get started. Okay. We are going to be using a substitution. We're going to take the time coordinate and define our dt to be some capital T minus an arbitrary function h of r dr. We're going to impose some conditions to find out what h of r has to be further on in the presentation, but for now let's keep it arbitrary and plug it into the dr and the dt and we'll see what we get. So this tells us that ds squared is now equal to minus 1 minus v squared dt squared. Well that's just going to be dt squared minus 2 h dt dr plus h squared dr squared and the rest of the terms go along for the ride dr squared over 1 minus v squared plus r squared d omega squared and you'll see in a moment why we defined the v coordinate basically it's just for convenience since that's the only combination of r and rs that'll appear in this problem okay next thing that we want to do is to distribute this through and we're going to pay special attention to the dr squared terms. 
So I'm gonna get minus one minus b squared, b capital T squared, plus two, one minus v squared, h dt dr, And finally, for the dr squared term, we're going to have, let's see, very important here, one over one minus v squared minus one minus v squared h squared dr squared, running out of room, plus r squared d omega squared, and now what we want to do is make sure I got this right first. Yeah, that should be right. So how we're going to determine h of r is we're going to set the dr squared coefficient equal to b1. Why do we do this? Well, basically because we know the answer will simplify. If we do this, you don't have to do this to get the explicit coordinate transformation without the singular behavior, but it, it just ends up being nicer. So now, we're going to let one be set equal to our dr squared co coefficient, one over one minus v squared minus one minus v squared, h squared, is there a squared there? Did I make a mistake already? Not, not, not yet, we'll see though. Okay, so from here we can just solve for h pretty easily h is going to be the square root. Okay, what we're going to do is take 1 minus 1 minus v squared over here. So put this term on that side. We're going to negate it and divide by 1 over 1 minus v squared. So this becomes 1 over 1 minus v squared minus 1, which we can simplify as put this over a common denominator, it becomes, let's just do a sidebar here. Sidebar here, this term becomes one minus, one minus v squared over one minus v squared, which is just gonna be v squared over one minus v squared. Which we note that these combine to be one minus v squared squared and we have a square thing on top. So the square root goes away. It just becomes v over one minus v squared. This is actually going to be our specific value for h. Is now going to be v over one minus v squared, which is pretty cool. Yep, should be good. And now we're just gonna make some simplifications here. So we see right off the bat that this term goes away because we just defined it to be one. All this crap is equal to b1. We're gonna make a similar observation here. We note that one minus v squared h is just one minus v squared times v over one minus v squared. So this actually cancels. This is just v here. So that, that's pretty nice as well. Things are working out nicely with the, the choice of h. And now we're gonna do a trick here. Since we know what the answer is, we wanna actually separate these two dt squared terms. You'll see why in a moment. So let's just do that. Yeah. This becomes minus dt squared. And now we're gonna have a, I'm gonna put the other dt squared term over there. I'm gonna rearrange the terms as well. We have a dr squared term plus two v dt dr. And now we have a plus v squared dt squared plus the r squared d omega squared term coming along for the ride as well. And now you see why I separated them. We're gonna keep the first term here, minus dt squared. And we note that this can actually be written as something squared. So we have squares two times the products of singular terms, then something else squared. So we know that this can actually be written as the square of the following quantity, 
dr plus v dt squared plus r squared d omega squared coming along for the ride, of course. And now to write our final answer, we're just going to write v out in terms of a Schwarzschild radius. <laughs> sorry. Plus the square root of r over, sorry, rs over r dt squared plus r squared d omega. This is our final answer for the pine leve gall strand metric. Or you can think of it as the pine leve gall strand coordinates, doesn't matter to me. So this is our final answer, is it? Just doing a double check. Don't want to give you incorrect information. Yeah, it should be good. Okay, so what have we done here? The mathematical content here should be the same as the Schwarzschild metric since we, tip, we just made a very simple coordinate transformation, just a linear superposition of this new variable T and our original radio component. So. It's not anything mathematically new, it still, it still describes the gravitational field outside of a spherically symmetric body. But what's new is here, the whole point of why we did this, it's a still singular at r equals zero from this portion here. We don't want to have a one over square root of zero. That's the same thing as one over zero, which is undefined. We don't want this. If we notice, if we plug this Schwarzschild metric in though, it becomes regular. Since we can have the square root of rs over rs is just equal to one. The metric is perfectly well behaved at the Schwarzschild radius. So this tells us quantitatively that nothing special happens at the Schwarzschild radius. In fact, you can pass through the Schwarzschild radius of a black hole and feel nothing special. It's just the fact that there are certain space-time implications for passing through. Rather, the causal structure has changed. Relationship or the causal structure is what changes at r equals rs. But there's not any kind of insane gravitational force. It's just the fact that once you pass the Schwarzschild radius, you can't actually get back out, which is a really cool feature of black holes. And if you enjoyed this, want to see more videos about coordinate transformations and general relativity as well, feel free to subscribe to my channel. We'll see you next time.